Thanks. Hi, uh, my name is Tony Kudner, uh, and I work for the National Hospice and Palliative Care Organization in Alexandria, Virginia. Um, and the, the part of uh, the sort of category three that I really wanted to focus on was this idea of civic engagement. Um, I think we hear a lot about, you know, terms that, that, that get some, uh, some buzz in the media like slacktivism and a lot of the things that I see in my role as a sort of grassroots uh, manager uh, is things that make it easier for constituents to communicate with their members of Congress, but we don't always talk about the content and quality of those communications. Uh, you can get an awful lot of people to send an awful lot of text messages, to tweet at a member of Congress, to send an email uh, communication form, uh, but if the content of that email is just like a hundred or a thousand or a hundred thousand others, what is the real impact to a member of Congress? So I wanted, I looked around and I couldn't find one place on the web that just talked about ways to be an educated, informed constituent and how to build relationships with your members of Congress. So I, I built one. Uh, and uh, it's a work in progress, but if we could just um, first go to the Who Represents Me tab. Um, there are just so many plugins out there that make this sort of stuff really easy. I, I can't tell you what API stands for, but I can get a Sunlight Labs API key. Uh, if, you enter a, if you enter your address in there, it's going to pull up your members of Congress, uh, their websites, their social media platforms. It's going to make it really easy for a citizen to start learning about who represents them. Uh, and again, uh, completely free. So if you scroll down, there you go. You can, you can start getting in contact with your members of Congress up and running just like that. Nobody spin, uh, nobody else in it. Uh, if we scroll back up for a second, I'm going to run out of time, but to building congressional relationships, uh, I went ahead and just built a little tool that isn't from any issue advocacy point of view, uh, but just gives some great tips about how to build these relationships for the long term so that when you need your member of Congress to take, to take action on an issue you care about, they're going to be there for you. Um, I think there's a lot of things that um, you could really start pushing into this, be an honest broker between members of Congress uh, and their constituents, let those members of Congress be honest about what they feel uh, in terms of what works for them and what doesn't. Uh, so uh, thanks very much for your time. I'm happy to answer any questions. So CMF survey uh, is, is both right and wrong in a sense. So uh, the survey said that uh, staffers say that communications from constituents influences their behavior. But it's only a small part of the picture about how uh, citizens lack power in Congress, which is citizens don't control who gets to run for office uh, and uh, who pays for, for elections and so on. So I think you're, you're, the, the position you were coming from in the video was both true, but also missing a bit of the big picture about why citizens are uh, not happy with Congress. Uh, it's 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 not it's not simply not true. It's not true and not true. There's some some more complicated well, sure. picture. Everything's there. great. It's simply mostly not true. I'll append it. Yeah. <laughs> but th your your point's well taken, uh, and I, I didn't mean to be uh, too flip about it. I, I think. Um, what I'd counter with is that I, I feel like if we had more information like this out there, not to be too idealistic, but if everybody took their civic responsibility very seriously, uh, that the role of uh, money and you know gerrymandering and uh, not getting to pick your candidate would be drastically reduced uh, if the citizenry were engaged and they had places to find all that information. So your point's well taken. Uh, maybe I, I just, that glass is half full. Yeah, I wanted to pick up on your comment about civic responsibility. Because it seems to me um, one of the key questions is, would something like this bring into the process groups which are excluded, which don't have voice? Or is it going to be mainly used by those who already know how to get information, access the system? So are you opening us up to broader participation with this? Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure I can really speak to that. I think having it out there as a free resource on the web that's not run by a group that has an agenda. I see a lot of sites like this that are tucked away either in university systems where those people are absolutely, you know, well informed of the process and know where to get their information. Uh, and the other place you see them is issue advocacy sites, you know, the people like the National Hospice Palliative Care Organization that has an agenda to push, um, but there's no standalone site that gives that information out. Uh, and I think around election time, people start asking a lot more questions about these issues. And um, you know, with uh, with some good keyword ad buys, I, I think you could really start getting it out there. Just are you interested in learning more about the civics process? Yeah. So the the, the key 
challenge then is making sure people know it's there. Absolutely. How you, okay. That's time. Thank you. Thank right, you. Thanks.